So we're now here in Lightroom and we're going to edit the images from our gecko shoot. As with previous shoots, I'm just going to flag them all as a pick to begin with. That way I can put my filter on for flagged and I can remove the ones we don't want. So these are our setup images. So we're going to get rid of those. And you can hear the fans on my computer whirling away in the background. There's not much I can do about that, so I will apologise for the audio if it does affect the audio. So let's come to develop and we're going to have a look at these images. Now obviously that one is no good. And we're looking for the ones that are in focus on his eye. Those are, but unfortunately he's behind the court box, so we want to get rid of those. No, um, I'm not too sure about that one. One that was better than that one, that one, this one, keep that one. I wonder, if the, I wonder what happened there. I wonder if the flash didn't go off. Yeah, I don't think the flash from the, the, uh, the foreground light went off on this image. Sometimes you get nice accidents like that. Okay. That. that one's good. That one's better. Yeah, that one's better than that one. So we've got some nice ones here. Okay, so this is the 21 millimeter extension tube. Oh, oh, yeah. Sometimes you just get that one that works. You know what I mean? I'm going to five star that one. And we're going to get rid of those ones. Let's just have a look at this. I don't know why. I just like that one. Let's go back and have a look at the uh, these others. See what we got. Um, no, that one's okay. Let's put those a four. Right now, I like when he's looking slightly away from the camera, same as in portraiture, when if you're looking straight at the camera, sometimes it's not as good as when you're looking slightly at, uh, I think it's a 45 degree angle, can look a little bit better. Yeah, that one's better. You see there how that just looks a little bit better because he's looking slightly away from the camera. Let's put that as a four. And get rid of those. So we have three good images. And I think for this video, I'm gonna work on just this image, okay? So what I'm going to do here is we are going to, um, let's increase the contrast. Yeah, that's nice. Um, do you want to bring the exposure up? Or we'll bring the exposure up just a little bit. Yeah, let's have a look play with these. I want to bring the highlights down a little bit. Shadows, I think I'm going to keep them the same. Whites, we can bring those up a little bit. And if you ever want to reset these uh, sliders to zero, just double click on the name and it will reset them. So if I bring this right up here and I'm, you know, I go, oh, I don't like that. So then I want to bring it back to zero. Instead of faffing around with this slider like this, 
you can just double click on it and it will bring it back to its default setting. No, I like that way it is. Right, let's bump clarity up. I always bump the clarity up on my macro shots. Same with the vibrance. And not so much with the saturation this time. Okay. Tone curve, as you know, I like to crush my uh, shadows a little bit. And I'm going to introduce some blue into those shadows. Very, very subtle. So we turn this on and off. A bit too much. Let's uh, let's drop back the RGB part. There we go. Subtle. There we go. Okay, I'm going to play with the colours now. So we're going to increase the saturation on the oranges and the blues. Let's turn that on and off just to see it. Let's come down to the very bottom. We have the camera calibration. Uh, let's just play with these oranges. That's a bit better. Uh, a bit too much. I like the blue, but I don't like the orange. Let's see if we can counteract it. There we go. Uh, let's bring up saturation just a little bit. So we're getting somewhere where I kind of like it. I want the orange, more orange, because it's gone a little bit yellow. So let's drop this down to zero. See how it looks. Let's come back up to our um, da, 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 HSL tab. I closed it for some reason, I don't know why. And what we're going to do is have a play with the sliders. So we can make that just a little bit more orangey. You can see there how that's just created a little bit better orange colour. Alright, so. I'm liking this so far, so now we're going to go on to our other corrections. Um, let's do the lens correction. Take both of those. You can see there how it, uh, it counteracts the distortion from the lens. I'll keep that on. And I think that will be it. I'm just wondering if the dehaze does anything that I like. And when when I'm playing around with something I don't know if I like it, I'll put the effect on. I will then just turn it on and off to see if I like it. Okay, and that looks okay. All right, so we're done with Lightroom. Now let's take this image over to Photoshop and let's just do a little bit more of an enhancement on it. I'm going to come to uh, Photo, Edit in, Adobe Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop the image. I've left some black around the edge to allow us to reframe it if we need to because sometimes you haven't got time to reframe your camera with these little critters because they're fast and they're always on the move. Now this is where we can do a little bit of fakery and reframe our image. So I'm going to come to the crop tool, make sure original ratio is ticked and delete crop pixels is unticked because we want to keep it non-destructive as possible. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom out, give me a little bit of freedom, and I'm going to play around with the crop of this image. And what I'm thinking is this rule of thirds here to be on his eye, like that. And just like you do with um, portraits or any type of um, image like this where someone's looking into the frame, you want more space on the side of the frame where the person is looking into. So now that we've done that, I'm going to grab my selection tool. I'm going to select this side, go to edit, 
and we're going to do content aware scale and just move that over click OK and control D to deselect so that gives us a much better crop than before so if I come to my um, snapshots we can see a before and after that's before and the after so what else do we want to add to this image because there's not much that needs doing but I am going to do a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a trickery type of thing here so what I'm going to do now I'm going to do some little bit of a trickery and I'm going to add some fake lens flare into this image it might not work but never let that stop you from trying and experimenting so what I'm going to do I'm going to create a new uh, new layer I'm going to grab my uh, brush now size it up so it's just a little bit smaller than the canvas I'm going to hold my alt key down and select a color from the canvas I'm going to brighten it up a little bit and then click once I'm going to do that it's a bit too big so I'm going to bring it back down there we go that should do and I'm going to right click on it and convert to a smart object I'm going to change the blend mode to soft light and zooming out press ctrl T to free transform that layer and I'm going to move it to the side and increase the size I'm going to drop the opacity to about 50 percent and what it does is I just add somewhere where the light's coming from and it also breaks up the background a little bit because we don't want a complete black background I'm going to do the same with the blue that's going to pick off him make it a little bit brighter click in the middle right click convert to smart object change the blend mode to soft light Control T to free transform and I'm going to put this right up the corner increase the size and he's going up the corner and the opacity to 50 percent so I had to zoom out so I could see the um, the free transform handles and that but let's have a look at that now if I use a snapshot again you can see it before and after very very subtle but just adds that little bit of oomph to the image okay so let's take a look at the before so that's where we started and this is where we've ended up we've got our little flares in the background and we've recomposed the shot I've got one last trick I want to show you which I learned from when I used to do matte painting I used to do it as a hobby just uh, creating all kinds of scenes fantasy scenes and that and one trick I used to do in there is every so often I used to flip the canvas around to see how it looks from the opposite side from the flipped view what I want to do is come to image image rotation and flip canvas horizontal so now can you see the difference that makes so now the gecko looks like he's coming from the left to the right which reads a lot more natural for me it does this is just personal opinion as an artist I think that looks better like that okay so I've just noticed this little thing on his uh, mouth here uh, I'm not too sure what it is a piece of dust or something I don't know so I'm going to take that out I'm going to turn off the um, flare layers I'm going to bring in a new layer I'm going to select the spot healing brush tool and make my brush slightly bigger than uh, the, the spot and just click once and there we go it's gone nice So I think with this image it pretty much all that needs to be done for this image very quick easy just adding those little bit elements just to enhance the image not change it but enhance it so I hope you found this video useful if you're not subscribed already please do consider subscribing I'm doing a lot of these type of videos so that's it for this video thank you for watching the video my name is Stuart Wood and I will see you on the next one